Good evening. I see we have zero people as we start. <laughs> that's okay. So actually, Abel already commented, are there any floating arms around? So that's in reference to our, our actual most recent video. Mm -hmm. So before we kick it off into the official intro that I've got uh, written up here, we are recording this a little bit differently because today is the like on the day, the 42nd anniversary. Yes of the assassination attempt of Ronald Reagan. So we decided to do this topic tonight, even though we just released a video about Stonewall Jackson. So we'll probably podcast on that next week. Yes. Um, so we're gonna jump right into it. Yeah. All right, so here, here, here's to talk with history. So, all right, so March 30th, 1981. It was a Monday like many spring Mondays in the D.C. area, overcast and cool enough to warrant wearing a jacket as a spring was ushering in the cherry blossoms and slowly but surely chasing away that bitter winter chill. The day was like any other, but not for long. Yes, this was still our nation's capital, and there were politicians, journalists, labor leaders, and many other people at the Washington, Washington Hilton for the Reaganomics speech that had just been given. In fact, there were several hundred people at this AFL-CIO fundraiser with the keynote speaker being none other than the Gipper himself. <laughs> it was 2.27 p.m. that the Secret Service announced to each other's ears that Rawhide was on the move, walking to his vehicle to head back home when all of a sudden gunshots rang out and President Ronald Reagan was shot. Welcome to Talk With History. I am your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. On this podcast, we give you insights to our history-inspired world travels, YouTube channel journey, and examine history through deeper conversations with the curious, the explorers, and the history lovers out there. Now, before we get into talking about this historic event tonight that happened 42 years ago on the date today, I want to ask our listeners for reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Now that we're on YouTube with this podcast, a YouTube like or a YouTube share would be great. It really helps the show grow, and it's because no one else, that's what I wrote, because <laughs> no one else is going to bring history to you like this, and the History Channel certainly doesn't do it either. That's right. That's right. We but need to bring history back to the History Channel. We need to bring it back, and, but seriously, History Channel, give us a call. Right, chipping Joanna Gaines of of the History Channel right we'll here. We'll do a whole <laughs> a whole series on location, yeah, and interview people and show you just like we do with this. We actually visited the location. That's right. So, Jen, tell us about what we're we're talking about tonight. So, this is the assassination attempt of President Ronald Reagan. Happened forty two years ago today, nineteen eighty one, and he had just given a speech in our nation's capital. And he was walking outside. And it's interesting because this Washington Hilton had kind of made this entrance for presidential speeches. That's right. Uh, Kennedy had been there a couple of times. This was a place they had a pretty good covering where they could let you off. And then you could walk. If you see that kind of brick area, uh, that's kind of a walkway where you can walk inside that brick area to go and speak. So it's pretty well protected. And that's where Reagan was going to give a speech to, I think, uh, union workers. Yeah. And Reaganomics. Yeah. So, um, and he had just finished giving the speech. So he was leaving and coming out. And it was like 227, like you had said. It was 227. And he waves to some people. And over where the plaque is at is where the gunman was standing. Hinckley was standing. Yeah. So the picture that's showing right now, this is the picture, one of the pictures that I took while we were there. We were in D.C. a couple weeks ago, and so we went up there. It was really cold, and th this Washington Hilton is is still used. I mean, even while we were mm -hmm. there, there were busloads of of young kids. You know, it looked like they were doing some sort of something or other leadership, or yeah, I, I have no, I have no idea. Kids come into D.C. all the time to do field trips and stuff. Right. They were well dressed in. Um, they were all wearing blazers, name, name tags. So it looked yeah. like they were doing some sort of. But school, they were looking at me like. Event. What is this? Um, but what so, is she talking so about? So it was an act, it's still actively used. Mm -hmm. It looks almost exactly like it did, you know, 42 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the plaque right there. You can see right there on our screen. And so Jen's Jen's talking over there in the better light. I'm kind of over here, uh, you know, behind the camera taking the pictures. And so that's the that's that's I was standing right where it happened. 
And so you get Hinckley, who fires six rounds in succession. And he has a revolver, so you can only fire six rounds. Yep. And the first shot actually hits the press secretary, Brady. And we'll talk more about that because you get the Brady bill that will come out of this. He hits him in the head. Brady goes forward. Um, it will impact Brady for the rest of his life. He will be in a wheelchair. Um, the second shot hits Tom Delaney. And Tom it's Delaney a is Secret a serviceman. He's a police officer. Police officer. Okay. And uh, as he hits him in the back, he says, he yells, I'm hit. So it kind of sets the events too that. He, and but he falls forward, and now you have a clear path to the president. Yeah. So he, he basically, Hinckley has taken out the two people that kind of were in the path of President Reagan. Um, the third shot hits Jerry Parr, and um, that's the person who pushes him into the limo. That's the Secret Service agent. Uh, as you can see, he's he's the one who has the jacket, and he's pushing him at the same time. Um, and. The shot goes actually over the, the over his head, so it doesn't really hit Jerry Parr. But the fourth one is going to hit the other Secret Service agent. That's Tim McCarthy, yep. and he's going to hit him in the chest. So he does his job. So what happens is the two people go down. Brady is hit. He goes down. The police officer is hit in the back. He says, I'm hit. I go down. The fourth shot goes over their heads, but Parr is pushing the president into the limo. Delaney turns towards the gunfire yep. and spreads out his arms, just like a Secret Service agent is supposed yeah, to do. He makes himself a bigger target. And he gets hit right in the chest. Um, and then the fifth shot hits the limo window, and it's the, f the fifth shot hits the limo window, but it's the sixth shot that gets the president. It's the sixth shot that ricochets off the parking lot, hits the back of the limo, and because the limo is bulletproof... It actually ricocheted back. Ricochets into the armpit oh, I didn't realize of that. Ronald Reagan. Yeah, So, and, and, I, and if I remember right, and, and the thing with our, our video, there's there's a ton of video. You guys can find a ton of videos on mm -hmm. the, the Reagan shooting. You can find a ton of journalists that have done it over the years, recently, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and they do some very in-depth, right? They actually drive the route and do and you know, kind of film on the whole thing. So we actually use those as a little bit of research on our side. So this, so there's some really good ones. But um, one of the things I think I remember him talking about is. They just they didn't realize he was hit. Right they didn't away. realize he was hit because he again it's it's a ricocheted bullet that's getting him in like the back left armpit. So I'm doing my right, so my, the left armpit. Um, his injuries were not noticed at first, and just like you said, um, Sergeant Butler. Yes, when Brady eventually passes away, his death is ruled a homicide mm -hmm. because his injuries uh, have led to the long term. Um, his death so it basically his long-term decomposition of his yeah. body like his and and, and I, I actually enjoyed learning the the call like the call sign or the secret service call yes. sign that was was rawhide rawhide for the president and they called the white house the crown yeah so they get in the limo the secret service hand shoves his hands on on the president to look for for anything um he doesn't see any blood because it's in his back left armpit and he goes, okay, let's head towards the crown. So that's what you hear on the radio. But then President Reagan starts to cough up blood. Well, and the other funny thing is, too, and, I, and again, I, I haven't edited our video yet. That'll, mm -hmm. that'll be the next video that comes out. But uh, the people on the radio are so worked up that some people are, are kind of forget to use the call signs. Yes. Right, about that some people say, like, are you going to the White House? And they're like, mm -hmm. he's like, Going to the crown, yes. you know, and then and then they pick the alternate location once he figures out that so he's been shot. So when he starts to cough up blood, the Secret Service agent realizes right away that there is blood in his lungs and he has to make a call. Yeah. And he has to and you have to say it over the radio. Yeah. So here he is telling everybody who kind of can have access to a radio that rawhide is going to George Washington. Yeah, and that's Ra what he says, like, Rawhide is hit, or Rawhide yeah. is going to George Washington. Rawhide is going to George Washington. Yeah. And so that's the name of the hospital, George Washington University Hospital. So he's using the exact name. Uh, and he had to really weigh national security yeah. at that moment. But the president will walk himself into the emergency room. Oh, I didn't realize that. So he does make a good show. And then as soon as he gets laid down on the gurney and they realize the seriousness of this, um, they don't put him under until Nancy Reagan gets there oh my gosh. and says, you know, says, um, 
something to him and he says i forgot to duck so he told i'm oh sorry gosh. honey i forgot to duck <laughs> yeah to <laughs> and so so if you see on the on the on, on the screen here if you're watching the live stream you can see this is us at the emergency room this is at, at us at the, mm -hmm. at the washington um hospital so this is kind of across the street and then up here, right, mm -hmm. it's Rogan, Ronald Reagan Institute of Emergency so Medicine. So he goes into that. He walks himself into the emergency room. Yeah, there. so they, they named it after him. Yeah, I don't know when they did that, but uh, it was it was neat. Again, just kind of being right there, like the George Washington you know, University Hospital. Mm -hmm. So um, so he, Nancy comes in. He tells her, I forgot to duck, which I think is really funny. But I, what I, one of the things I really love about Reagan, he keeps his um, morale up. And he keeps people around him to morale up. So before he goes in for surgery and before they put him under, he looks around at all this, this the medical staff and the surgeon. And he says, I hope you're all Republicans. Yeah, I know you, you love that story. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> and because the head surgeon, who's actually a Democrat, yeah. says, Mr. President, we're all Republicans today. Yeah. So, I mean, I love that a, a Democrat would say that to him to kind of put his mind at ease. Well, and that's a, and, it, and it's so I love it because it's so kind of stereotypical of Reagan, too. <laughs> that's kind of what he was known for. We were, we were doing our research on Reagan. Mm -hmm. We were watching videos and they talked about all the time, like how he would crack jokes during his speech, like uh, unlike a lot of his predecessors, you know, before him. Yes. And um so even in that even in that time, right? He's getting ready to to, to go under for surgery. He's he's cracking jokes. Um, so it just kind of really kind of encapsulates him and in, in his persona right then and there. Yes, and so he will he will go under surgery. They will find the bullet. They will patch him up. Uh, we we read that the. Uh, Oscars were supposed to air that night, so they delay the Oscars for one night because the president had actually uh, recorded a message for the Oscars. And so they delay it one night and then they show the Oscars, that they do the Oscars the next night and show the video the next night. The, the one thing that was scheduled that didn't get canceled was the NCAA basketball championship was playing that night. That same night. That same night. Oh, wow. And they didn't delay that, but they did have a moment of silence for the president. Wow. So um, he's only there for 11 days. And he, again, the, this, this, is, this is an interesting time in the country, too, because things are happening fast, right? This, is, this assassination attempt, president is shot, president's going in for surgery. So people were like... <laughs> Who's in charge? George Bush is hearing about this in the air. He's on Air Force Two. So he's hearing about this in the air. And this is when you get the Speaker of House who who makes that statement. I'm in control. Oh, I don't I don't remember that. Again, I haven't put the video that yet together. So I haven't done like basically my research and yeah. learning on this. So the Speaker of the House will do a press conference because America's getting worried. Yeah. All right. And uh he'll say, I'm in control. And people go, What? Like that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's, there's there's another person in between you, right? There's there's a couple steps. But the Secretary of State, like it's gonna go, President, Vice President, Secretary yeah. of State, Prime Secretary of Defense. Like you have all these secretaries that before the Speaker of the House is the gonna Speaker of the House is third in line. Is that was third? Yeah. Um, so he yeah. says I'm in control. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's too funny. Bush is like in the air. He's like, what? What? Like uh, I still exist, you right. know? So it's like, hello. Uh, so that. That happens. But another thing that's happening in 81 at the time is news coverage. Yeah, it, it was kind of. So this it, recording. The early, en the early end of that yes. uh, CNN type yes. era. Yes, yeah, this is right. CNN's first year. And so NBC was there. ABC was there. That's where you're getting the cover, the very good angle of everything that's happening. And CNN starts to play that over and over again and cnn runs it for a full 24 hours with updates as they go and some of the things they get wrong is they get wrong that brady was killed and it, it takes a while before they realize that brady was not killed so that's one of the first things they do report um but what happens is it really cements cnn as being a place to go for a very to date yeah and just kind of minute by minute minute you know, by 24 minute. hour news yes if you want to go for good coverage like you know actual up-to-date coverage yeah the cnn was the place to go 
that, like I said, they've only been around for a year, but doing this. Right. And- I'm sure that that was, they were like the place because yes. every, all the other typical networks would take breaks. They would go to their other programming and this, that, and the other. And this is, this event happens. It was kind of like laid their foundation of like, yes, this is what we do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Oh wait, no. So it was uh secretary of state, Alexander Haig stated he's in control here. <laughs> That's what he said at the White House until George Bush returned. So it was Secretary of State that said that. Yeah. So they're probably like, everyone was like, what are you talking about? Huh. Um, Haig is fourth in line of secession after Bush and the Speaker of the House. So he would have been fourth, but he said he was in control. Just totally jumped over the Speaker of the House. Yeah. Now, when we talk about Hinckley, the, the, the shooter, uh, a lot of people, you know, John Hinckley Jr., who is the one who fires his gun at the president uh, and eventually will kill Brady, um, he says he does it to get the attention of Jodie Foster. Uh, he had seen Jodie Foster in Taxi Driver, and he was very enamored with her. And so he thought if he did this, he could bring attention to himself. Um Jodie Foster, in return, has only ever spoken about this four times. Yeah, I thought this was really. I thought this was interesting. And I, and when you said that to me, I was like, you know, I, I don't, I don't blame that. I don't blame her. Yeah, she doesn't want to give attention to him. Yeah, she doesn't want him to get what he wanted from her. So she spoke about it immediately after. Uh, she did an op-ed and wrote about it, and she spoke about it to other times in interviews she's asked about it and she commented on it she will go out of her way to cancel interviews or walk out of interviews if they ask her about this and she has told them that she's not going to speak on it yeah to the point like she doesn't want to give it power sure she doesn't want to give hinkley yeah. power well, i can i can understand that <laughs> um let's so what you know, for obviously hinkley was captured I I'll be perfectly honest. I don't actually know like what ended up happening to him. I know he was convicted, pled insanity, pled insanity, which is, of course, he's insane. Like sure. yeah. I want to be like, of it's kind of, of, it's kind of, kind of obvious, kind of obvious. You're you know. insane, but because no one, I think, died. So I think at the time, no one was killed. Or like right when it happened. Right when it happened. So even, I, even though Brady, you know, passed away later, later, much later. Okay. Um, even though nobody was killed, he could plead insanity. He was put in, he was institutionalized. He was just recently released. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And it's because the president is dead. Yeah. Now Reagan is dead and Brady, you know, so they, and I think he's very limited in where he can go and he's very watched and monitored, but yes. He's, I'm surprised. I, I don't think I even realized that. Was yes. that like within the past couple of years or like the past decade or so? Uh, I think if somebody knows on the chat, I can tell you, um, He made Brady permanently disabled, James Brady. We've talked about that. Yep. He, I think it's 2020. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, except they released him into COVID. I know. <laughs> maybe that was, uh, maybe that was intentional on their part. Yeah, feel free to go, go free. Yeah. You know, during a pandemic. Oh, wait, here we go. In twenty in 2016, a federal judge ruled that Hinckley could be released from psychiatric care as he was no longer considered a threat to himself or others. After 2020... A ruling was issued that Hinckley may showcase his artwork, writing, and music publicly. Oh, okay. And then he has a YouTube channel. And Oof. then his restrictions were unconditionally lifted in June of 2022. So, yeah. Um, wow. I know. It's it, it's interesting. Uh, but, yeah, James Brady will never recover from this. He's disabled. He will maintain um, press secretary for the rest of the year, but it's oh. more of a positional yeah. title. Sure. Um, because he will be in a wheelchair and it will in- impact his speech. Uh, and then he passes away in of August of 2014. Yeah. And I, like I said, the medical examiner will rule it a homicide because he will succumb to the injuries that he received from that gunshot wound to the head. Yeah, and there was some interesting stuff that Abel brought up in the chat about some of the things that came out of of this, you know, the now kind of the unit and the kind of whole entourage secret service and otherwise that travels with the president travels with, you know, equipment that could help save his life right then and there. Right. Yeah. They, they wouldn't have to, I'd have to scroll up in the chat, 
but she she te- she kind of mentioned up here um, today the whole the presidential circus that runs with the president from ambulance plus doctor um, and surgical mobile suite with an extra counter assault team, special comms units, you know, and, and all the stuff. And that actually makes sense. They're probably more prepared for these kind of emergencies. More, I mean, they learn their lessons from stuff like this. More prepared from these kind of things. Oh, yeah. Hello from Kentucky. Someone said hello from Kentucky. Hi. Um, and that I again, I think that like anything else, you know, they're they're learning from what was I don't know if I would call it a mistake at the time because nobody was expecting that and, and everybody kind of did their job. But uh, absolutely, you can you can see that, you know, after something like that, they're going to be like, yep, we're going to have the president travel with a little bit more now. Yeah. So uh, Tim McCarthy is still alive. The Secret Service agent got shot in the chest. Has, oh, wow. Had three children afterwards. Um, and the police officer, Tom Delaney, is also still alive. He was shot in the back. Uh, one thing that I thought was interesting is the president's approval rating goes up after this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not. That's not super surprising, right? People rally around. Yeah, know, a, a horrible event like that. People, yeah. it doesn't matter kind of what you're. If you disagree with Reaganomics at the time or mm-hmm. not, mm-hmm. people are going to rally around something that's you know obviously like that they you know hey you can't be shooting the president. Yeah, you know? and I think people again Reagan. He's such a good communicator, yeah. right? And so he's so good with people and putting them at ease and building morale yep. that I think people saw just the way he handled the whole thing. I think when he comes out of surgery, he asks, does anyone know what the shooter's beef was? Like, I think he asks that. <laughs> well, that's what even Sean Wiley says in the chat. He says, I love watching different clips of President Reagan, how he spoke and carried himself as like no other president. Mm-hmm. Right. That's probably partly his acting background. Right. He mm-hmm. had that presence. He knew kind of how to, how to work that. Um, and that's one of the things that endeared him to to the public. Mm-hmm. Right. And made him that good speaker, um, you know, as well as the different things that 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 he did right he's a he's a highly i don't know better way to say it yeah that he's a lot of people's fit you know one of their top favorite presidents he was very good on off the cuff yeah he's a good he delivers a line well i mean he's an actor right so when you think about it like he was very good at giving speeches yeah he was very good at making the country feel at ease i remember when the challenger disaster happens and he speaks to america he was just one of those great deliverers of you know, an orator, yeah. basically. Um, wh- another thing that I thought was interesting is the Dow Jones dips the next day, but it, it pops right back up after he comes out of surgery. Oh, interesting. So just kind of a little market uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Yes. Huh. Uh, but there's a plaque there now. And like I said, we, we all, when our next video you'll see on Wednesday, we go to the Washington Hilton, we'll go to George Washington University Hospital. And we'll talk about the events that take place and the Secret Service having to um, make the call to say on the air. Remember, it, the bullet probably would not have ricocheted and hit the president if it wasn't for the bulletproof limousine. Yeah, that's interesting. That it hit. Uh, and, you know, getting so close to the president and having such close access to him yeah. as well. Does I, I wouldn't say it doesn't happen today, but you're more screened to have that close of access to him. Uh, it was a it was a really cool video yeah, to I do, mean, it, and it was it was a quick trip, right? There's not yeah. this is a, a short, small kind of you know contained event, and again, even for us when we were visiting, you know, we went to the hotel and we went to the hospital. So mm-hmm. in that effect, we actually filmed I think two different videos that day. Yes, because later on we did Rose Greenhow, which Rose is Greenhow. something that we've already published. And I don't think there's been an assassination attempt on the president since him. Not that I am aware yeah, of. Yeah, not that, I mean, not that the public is aware of, right. but there hasn't been something that was so close yeah. and the president actually got bodily harmed from. Um, yeah. So it was very, uh, that, it was a neat story to do. It was a neat story to do. To be perfectly honest, like the, the video on Wednesday will probably be on the shorter end for mm-hmm. us, which is still longer for YouTube. Our videos average, you know, 12 to 15 minutes. Um, and even the podcast tonight, you know, this is going to be a short podcast, but it's neat to be able to do this on the on the anniversary of the event yes. 42 years ago and then excuse me again like anything else 
we just wanted to visit the location. Yes, we just wanted to go there and because we remember, I remember it vaguely. Scott wasn't even born yet. Nope. Does anyone <laughs> on the chat have any memories of that day and how they heard it? Yeah, there, there's a couple. I think Abel said she remembered hearing it over the radio um, and people hadn't hadn't known about it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other folks that said they'd save some of the new news clips um, you know, from that day. So, um, yeah, Sean, he always, he made jokes about it afterwards, a balloon, he was giving a speech and a balloon popped Yeah, and he yeah. stopped and said, miss me uh, and continued with the speech. He was very good at that. Like I said, even the things he says when he gets to the hospital, yep. to his wife, to the surgical team, like he's just very good at putting people at ease. And I think a leader does that, yeah. you know, instills confidence in, in his health. So it was just very neat. Yeah. Well, and my daddy's green eyes, you know, someone we've known here on the channel for a while says she saw it on TV when they cut in breaking news. I mean, I'm sure, right. Mm -hmm. if, if you were, you know, in front of a television screen or near a radio at the time, um, look, there's someone else who's uh, at the high school basketball practice when I heard the news. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So there's a few folks. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure if, you and know, you, and if you watch the video, which is, you'll see Brady go down right away. Like yep. I said, he's the first one shot and it, it's, it happens fast. Yeah. It's very fast. And so you see it happen fast. And like the two, the two people that are hit right away in giving the clear shot to the president, and you have to give it to the secret service guys because yep. they're the ones who push him into the car and the other guy, they, you know, they, blocks they them. react immediately. They react immediately. Reagan really got shot because it was just a malfunction. Got lucky. Yeah. That bullet, it wasn't Hinckley's aim nope. or anything like that. Like he, it just got lucky. Uh, but, and it was unfortunate, but really the surgery went well and Reagan, you know, lived a, a, a happy and productive life till the end. But, uh, but it, you really have to hand it to the secret service. They did a good job. And even then when they found out he was bleeding and they had to make the call, yeah. they, don't think the president i mean as much as he was able to walk into the emergency room he he was deteriorating fast oh for sure and so to get him to george washington university right away was the best call because there's no way he could have went to the white house then to surgery yeah. um so yeah it's, it's it's i think uh a learning experience for the secret service as well i'm sure they study that case a lot oh there we go they, man, Abel's been around and done everything. Oh, she wow. met Reagan a couple of political events in 1980 through 1988. That's, that's very, super cool. That's very cool. Very, very cool. So, you know, Scott's a Californian. Yep. So Reagan had his ranch up by Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And we've been to the Reagan Library a couple times. Yeah. It's in the San Fernando area. It's in the San Fernando area. It's right by where you're. It's Simi Valley. Yeah. Valley. My, my family lives like yeah. 20 minutes from there. And one of our first pictures, I think we were newly married, is us waving in front of Air Force One, of Reagan's yeah. Air Force One. That's right. Because we're allowed to go in and they have it in the hangar now there at his presidential library. They have a recreation of the Oval Office. It's a huge presidential library because it's in the middle of Simi Valley. Yeah. And I think he's buried there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So very, very cool. And we appreciate, you know, people kind of sharing their their uh, memories of that, you know, in the chat and everything like that on the live stream. Again, this is kind of a, sh a short one for us tonight. Um, but it was, it was super fun and we wanted to, we kind of made the extra effort tonight to come on a little bit later, um, and, and do this on the anniversary, even though we haven't made the video. So I know even less than I normally would, um, <laughs> because normally I do all my learning when I'm editing the, those videos. So to those, uh, listening, thank you for listening to the talk with history podcast and please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com. But more importantly, if you know someone else that might enjoy this podcast or this video, Please share it with them, and especially if you think today's topic would interest them. Shoot them a text. Tell them to look us up. We rely on you, our community, to grow, and we appreciate you all every day. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thank you again for joining us on the live stream. We really do appreciate this. Um, hopefully, you guys kind of are, are enjoying these um, and uh, – yeah, lots of lots of interaction in the chat. That's great. Yeah, we just really wanted to do it on the anniversary <laughs> today because it was cool. We had been there. It's kind of it's it's still a very significant event in history, and uh, 
it was just neat to to do it on the actual anniversary. Yeah, so we really do enjoy doing these these uh, these live streams and kind of having you guys join us while we're basically recording our podcast. You know, and then I'm I'm going to edit it later, and then mm-hmm. I'll, I'll push it out. You know, a couple different couple different times. So. So thanks again, guys, and um, you know. Yeah, look forward to this video coming out on Wednesday. Yeah, this this will be the so this is a kind of a preview this time rather mm-hmm. than than a review. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you guys next week most likely, and uh, yeah, we'll do Stonewall Jackson next week. Yeah, we'll do Stonewall Jackson and his next week. Arm and yes, and Abel, <laughs> yes, his his floating arm, his floating arm, <laughs> his, his his arm that got lost. If you don't know what we're talking about, go to our channel. It's our most recent video. Yes. So, all right, we'll see you guys. Thank you.